Okay, here we go. To, this is to District 1, Trent Park and Glenn Sturlant, and District 9, TP Pick Me Ups. What parts, if any, of the Mayor's Budget Task Force recommendations for bridging the RPS budget gap do you support, and which, if any, do you oppose? And please be specific. Excuse me? Who would you want to start with? Just go in a circle. Then we'll start with the one on the end and then next to him and or start there. Yes. We we'll do clockwise. Ladies first. Okay. Um, my specific plan would be to uh, look at the transportation. One of the reasons why I think transportation is so important is that in the past we've cut transportation, which then kind of takes away choices from our parents to be able to allow their students to go to different schools. But it became pretty evident to me that transportation was a big piece of what we need to look at in Richmond Public Schools is working in the high school, we have students who have an opportunity to participate in dual enrollment. Well, many of those students didn't have any transportation provided with that dual enrollment opportunity. And I just saw that as a, just a a deterrent to their success. It's, it's hard to, a, a child that has done everything that they could do to be successful once they get in high school and then have the opportunity to further their education with these dual enrollment classes and not have the occupation, um, the opportunity to get to those um, colleges. It, it doesn't make sense to me. So that would be definitely be one of the areas that I would want us to explore is some consolidation perhaps with GRTC, an opportunity for our students to have discounted um, fares along with our seniors. Uh, I thought that the mayor's task force uh, on the $25 million budget gap uh, came up with a lot of common sense uh, things that we can save money and find efficiencies without uh, negatively impacting the classroom. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the school board voted to impact the classroom and to furlough the teachers this year for uh, five days, which is, uh, Kim Gray said, is a 3% is a pay cut for the teachers. And so we need to go through this budget. We spend $300 million a year on Richmond City Schools Plus. Uh, we need to go through that budget and make sure that we are squeezing every nickel out of every dollar. There are opportunities to consolidate services with the city. It doesn't make sense for the Richmond Public Schools to have an IT department and for the city to ha have an IT department. Does it make sense for uh, the city to have their own attorneys and for Richmond Public Schools to have their own attorneys? There are a lot of efficiencies and savings that don't affect the classroom. You know, one, one of the, the big issues is the school buses, uh, an audit found, the school buses drive four million miles a year without a single kid on board. They call them deadhead miles. And so until gas is gonna get cheaper, we have got to find ways to efficiently uh, run these schools because we are bankrupting ourselves and we're not getting better. We're not going to be able to pay the <clears throat> teachers better uh, and so we have got to make tough decisions uh, and to really improve this, uh, these schools. Um, I'm glad we came back to a budget issue because I was going to actually speak to the, the one that was asked earlier. Um, the, we ended up in a pickle last budget cycle because um, people didn't want to work together and the mayor um, decided to stick it to the school board and form the task force. Now, I'm a believer in the things that the task force um, was chartered to do, and that is to find efficiencies in the schools. I think it was a little disingenuous to the, to the great people that were serving on the task force to give them such a tight time frame to come up with such a large budget uh, reduction. And if you all remember, the um, Robert Bob report included furlough days and so forth. And I think that that really strayed from finding efficiencies in the schools. That was clearly trying to get the number down. Uh, I agree with a lot of the, the items that were in the, the mayor's task force. But again, some of them um, didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. The renting uh, school roofs to cell tower companies. 
I think it's a great idea, and I think everybody on the school board would be happy to do that. Um, but it's a matter of finding the clients that are willing to pay the schools to do that. Uh, with the transportation, I can understand. I'm sure that there are efficiencies to be found in the transportation. But uh, I happen to see the presentation that Andy Hawkins gave to the school board where uh, he looked at Richmond's transportation, and mile per mile, student per student, we are um, doing pretty well compared to the average. And in, in particular interest in there is that the city of Roanoke went with a, uh, um, a consultant uh, service transportation option uh, solution, and they are higher in both metrics than the city of Richmond. So the city of Richmond is doing it cheaper than Roanoke, who went to the paid <coughs> service. Um, I agree completely with Ms. Gray on the, the VRS thing came up with the school budget. I don't know why we opted to go with the 3% uh, contribution to VRS when the state clearly gave us the option to scale that up over a five year period and do 1% a year. That could have reduced the teacher furloughs, maybe even eliminated the teacher furloughs if we'd just gone with the 1%. I don't think the board members quite understood exactly what their options were there. And furthermore, I, I can't stand furloughs because they hurt our best teachers. And I would propose that we, we furlough staff in a ratio where the central office gets a, a higher number of furlough days okay. compared to the teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.